I met Marco and Dragan in, I think it was 2001, 2002, in a talk pretty much like this. I gate crashed it, I was a student, and I didn't have the entrance money to get in. So I kind of lied and said I was one of the speakers and that I was there to present an idea, which when it came to my turn, I just had to say, look, I don't have one. But I left that day with basically a whole load of just new ideas and inspiration in my head, which lasted me a fairly long time. I met Marco, um, and I kept in touch with Marco. He's quite an elusive character to get hold of, and to keep hold of. But he's one person who could um, set up these flights, like you said, for a limited amount of time. There was some leeway with the Russian Space Agency. Um, basically, Arts Catalyst put out a call after that conference that they were gonna, um, for artists to participate. I put forward an idea at the time to release a cat and a mouse in zero gravity. And at the time, I kind of, what I really wanted to do was release a bird, and I just didn't think that a bird would survive, so I didn't put forward that idea. Um, and it wasn't accepted. At the time, I thought it was maybe for ethical reasons. I had a lot of problems getting ethical back and for it. I mean, back and for it in general. <laughs> um, but it was actually because it just seemed like a really, really hard work. And it was. It took me six or seven years to be able to make the work. During that time, I spent a lot of time researching animals in space, and everything that you've heard here tonight would never have taken place if they'd known about animals in space. So this is the kind of typical image. It's a little bit sensationalist, but these are some of the first dogs to go into space. I'm going to show you an installation view first, and then I'm going to show you a six minute edit of what I made. There's no sound, uh, um, because the sound of the aeroplane, I thought, was a distraction and away from the images. This is a black cat called Pokulba. She's a two-year-old, well, she was two years old at the time. She's a Russian cat, and she's inside of a specially designed tent, which is maybe about this height, and there was a central arena, and there was an entrance for the cat, and there was an entrance for the mouse. I had years to design this, it was all I could do before I had the money. And inside of the red container, there are basically two mites. And the idea that I had initially, although there'd been lots and lots of experiments with, with animals in space, there'd never been a test of the relationship of animals to each other. So I thought it might be interesting to basically capture um, how a predator and a prey react to each other. That actually became the least interesting and least important thing about it. And it became about what every zero gravity flight becomes about, which is just maintaining equilibrium and trying to find balance and trying to... Uh, but a cat, strangely, was adapted to it far better than what you can't see here because I didn't film it because there was so many films already of people floating in zero gravity, is that everything outside of here is chaos. But the cat, over the ten parabolas, and I filmed in slow motion to mimic nature photography so I can see exactly how it adapted, was basically over ten parabolas it did learn to adapt and it did learn to, it kind of uses its tail as a almost like a propeller and it kind of slows itself down and it always kind of manages to land on its feet. I'll show you the slightly longer edit. If I can navigate in back. I'll just leave this playing in the background as I talk. Can I make this bigger? This one. So basically this is a, an edited section of the ten parabolas. You can see that the cat is obviously disorientated and scared by what happens. This is the first parabola, so this is the first time it experiences weightlessness. I couldn't film during the double gravity phase because the lights were off in the aeroplane. But obviously it's just not visually interesting either. Everything is kind of pressed down, nobody can move. Psychologically it's quite difficult, but visually nothing really happens that much. Um, this is 30 seconds slowed down, I think I filmed in 300 frames per second. And as you can see, the cat's, it's made out of ripstack material. One of the concerns I had after working on it for so long would basically be that the cat would just grab on to the sides of the tent and just hold on for dear life and not move. And that all I would have, <laughs> all I would have for six years of effort and 30,000 pounds would just be a picture of a cat just kind of like hanging on like that. <laughs> So the designer who designed the tent for me, um, there was an initial design by a space engineer and his idea for it was one of those water balls, you know, where you climb in and you can kind of tread on water. He thought that would be a good kind of arena.
for the cat and the mouse to meet. But actually on the day, um, the Russians wouldn't let me release the, the mice. That was the, their only ethical concern really was that the mice would get loose in the aeroplane and chew all the wires. Um, and they wouldn't let me do it. And when I got there, I'd been so busy kind of curating the whole flight, I raised all the money myself when I selected the artists. Um, and I'd been so busy taking care of them, because you have a responsibility to, once you've invited people, that I didn't have a cat when I arrived in Russia. I had 10 days till the aeroplane flight. You know, all the money was raised, everyone was in their hotel, and I didn't have a cat, so <laughs> it was basically... And I didn't have mice as well, which was slightly easier to find in a pet shop. But by accident, Marco was meant to meet me um, from the airport, and he hadn't. And I'd sat next to a guy on the train whose family were in the circus. And he showed me to the hotel because I couldn't navigate the Russian metro. And he found me this cat called Copa. And she was one of three cats who lived in a high rise in, in Russia. And the one thing that did slightly disturb me about it was when I actually went to pick her up, why they would let this one cat go, but they wouldn't let the other cats be used. I'll show you a picture of my cat in a minute, Major Tom, just to prove that I'm not cruel. Um, but basically, I think in some ways it was the lack it was the lack of sentience that the cat had about the experience which enabled it to cope with it. I was so aware of what was going on outside, I was so terrified of what was going on outside that I panicked and that panic contributed to the nausea which you experience. Whereas the cat, for, you know, it, was the, it was actually the noise of the aeroplane which I thought was the main source of disturbance to the cat. Um, the mice just weren't bothered. <laughs> they just kind of, you know, dealt with it as they did. They didn't seem to... Um, but this was the only container that I could get from the pet shop. When I turned up there, you know, I just managed to get a cat. Now I had to get some mice. And the only container that they had, which I could show, uh, which I could take the mice away with me, was a red school bus. And so I arrived at the airbase with a cat, you know, and two mice and a red school bus, delirious, hadn't slept. And I got told that the cat only ate raw meat, and so I was running around the Russian airbase trying to find some food for the cat, you know, I'm trying to, what's the Russian for raw meat? You know, we're trying to give it something. So I didn't sleep the night before, and I didn't cope with zero gravity at all. You know, I'm, I'm outside of here being sick next to the doctor who's also being sick, which as you can see is, is a pretty common story. But overall, um, there are ethical kind of problems. I look back on it now, it did take me six seven years to make and um, you know it's a long time since I had the idea and in some ways it does seem a little bit naive now if I'm honest about it but what it's led to you know me making work in kind of site specific extreme environments you know that still intrigues me and that still inspires me and I'm going to be doing a work with the European Space Agency on Mars um, which is in 2019 to choreograph a dance with a robot on Mars, so basically the same principles behind this about putting, subjecting yourself to chaos and kind of producing something site specific is a kind of underlying theme I've noticed through the artists that work this way. Mark is doing stuff in the Arctic right now, you know, there's that same drive to go somewhere where it's exploratory, you know, people want to go and do something, something new. Is this uh, captured in the Sorry? <laughs> no, that's hamster food. I mean, like the, the mice food. And, oh, sorry. The mice food. Yeah, the water, the water feeder came out. Um, ah. And then basically all this stuff in the background. It's not very nice to say, but the slightly yellow tinge is also cat urine. But it has an interesting, interesting colour to it all. <laughs> so the original premise for, um, for doing it was to see whether or not the cat would catch the mouse. And there's only one shot in which the mouse is out. You can see it here. Um, but obviously the cat's just not bothered by the end of the <laughs> <laughs> At the end of ten problems, the cat just wants to go home, you know, as we, as we all did. Uh, the, pro the main problem actually was getting the mice. You know, the, the pet shop would not take the mice back. I had to pay the pet shop to take the mice back because, you know, what was it going to do with them, take them home? Was it no? But for anyone who's interested in doing a zero gravity flight, like Marcos just says, you know, the, the opportunities may be changing a little bit, but it is possible. It's really, really hard. It's really, really tough. But what he says about, you know, some artists turned up and kind of knew what they were going to do there, and it was a really tight idea. I think because I'd had so long, I could do nothing else but research it, so I was one of those. And Bradley Pitts, who did the flight the next day, he's done flights with NASA. He was prepared for all the problems, and he produced something so site-specific 
that it works. But I think some of the artists who came along, they just, I mean, visually, when you see pictures of zero gravity, it looks peaceful, it looks easy in some ways, because the artists who you've seen like, working on it have done so really professionally. But when you get there, if you don't have a plan, it's complete chaos. And it's kind of better to keep a simple idea in which chaos is part of it, in some ways, you know, in forms of it. So, um, what else do I have to show? There you go, there's Major Tom, there's my kitten, just to remember. Did he watch it? Major Tom, he's a, he's a bit of a, a bit of a scary cat, he doesn't, doesn't like, you know, I tried, I did try in, in my defence, you know, because obviously, ethical uh, decisions get raised about this all the time. In my defense, I did want to make a work with him because part of the work for me was trying to train him. You know, I didn't, when I had the idea, I didn't have a cat. I hadn't had a cat, you know, and I knew nothing about cat. And I remember getting like kittens for dummies when I first got Major Tom, you know, and learning about cats and learning about what they're like. And part of the work, if it, if it, had, been cura if it had been commissioned and I had the freedom of not trying to arrange all the money and everything else in the background, I probably would have liked that to be part of the work and the documentation, me, you know, noise sensitivity and all that kind of thing. Um, but it would have been so hard to get him in Russia to get a visa, a pet passport for him. And so I originally contacted like an animal acting company, but they were going to charge me two grand. And I thought they were just going to go off, over to Russia and just pick up a stray cat off the street. So as, as haphazard as it was, you know, there was no other way for me to do it. It wasn't commissioned, it was all haphazard. Marco was working for free, I was working for free. All the artists were involved, you know, they'd, they'd tacked along for four years without any money being, being in the question. So it wasn't like the arts cat, let's fight. It wasn't, you know, organized. <laughs> it wasn't really organized. It was just haphazard, but that apparently is quite a common experience of working with the Russians. And that's what gives you the freedom. You know, as, as much as, you know, they kind of, I don't know, they're, they're open-minded enough you know, because they're not this closed kind of like NASA, like, you know, official, they're, they're open to ideas. Their only problem with the work wasn't, you know, the fact that I want to do this strange thing. It was just like, as long as the mice can't get out, that's it, that's fine. There's no question. So. Brilliant. Then, uh, well, thanks so much. Any, any more questions? Any questions? Yeah. It's the last questions of the night. Absolutely. We're running out of it, so... I just wanted to ask how you keep track of what you... Because I'd love to see... Yeah, can you take... Sorry, give her That's the mic. Take the microphone forward, the people who are following something. I just wanted to ask how we can keep a track of your experiments because I wanted to see what, what happens with the other things that you do. Um, I have a website, it's just my name. Uh, maybe you can send it out, I don't know, to, there's a newsletter or something, but it's just www.lynnhagen.com. Okay, cool, thanks. Yeah, one here, no. Yeah, I, I love the pizza, I was about six times yesterday. Okay, cool. <laughs> Big fan. And um, technical questions. Hi. Are there any rigs? How do you touch the cameras? I mean, you it have obviously like, two cameras, right? Uh, uh, this what I mean, you know, it wasn't really, really well. It was thought out as much as it could be, but on the day that I was meant to visit the aeroplane to see what I was going to be in, uh, Putin decided to land that day. So I'd flown all the way to Russia and I was just told we can't go. So I never saw the aeroplane until the day that I installed the work. Um, so I had concert rigging and I actually had, to, I couldn't afford to ship it, so I had to carry it. Um, to Russia, you know, I had like, I paid excess baggage and it weighed, you know, I had it in two portable skips, so I carried it across myself. And basically the tent was suspended from uh, that rigging, so the rigging was like an egg shape. And then the tent was kind of suspended underneath with three compartments, and they were all zipped, so you could zip behind and the mouse stood no chance of escape, but actually the cat almost got out, but anyway. Did, did the cat make a lot of noise? I was busy being sick. <laughs> I was on the other side of the aeroplane. I don't know. I don't. Th not initially. I was inside of the cat's, like as a safety measure, in case anything went wrong. I stayed inside of the cat's entrance container, and I had like a flight attendant holding me down um, because obviously I was raising up. Um, so when I unzipped it after the first parabola to have a look in, the cat was fine, you know. But by that time, I wasn't. So everything's about your own survival. You know, nothing, it's really hard psychologically to, to cope with it. And you just, once you're in there and once you're experiencing weightlessness, some people love it, you know, I envy them, but I didn't. 
Really? Thank you. Excuse me? No cats while we're making the video, but we can't yeah. say the same about the artist. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now. Well, uh, thanks so much again, yeah. Lee. Uh, also, thanks to Anna Piva. We didn't have yeah, a chance thank to. You, sorry. And um, yeah, the next session will be roughly in a couple of months. And in September, we are organizing a big cosmic in Mexico 